Hey guys and welcome back to a new Android Basics video in which I will be talking about resources and qualifiers in Android. Resources in the end just refer to non-code things your album needs. That can be things like pictures, vector graphics, but also localized strings. So basically just a text that is translated to different languages so your app can support that as well. And there's just a lot more types of such resources, which I will go over in this video and how you can access them in code, but also how you can have different variants of these resources for different devices and configuration. In Android Studio, we can find these resources here under the RAS folder by opening this up. And by default, we have drawable, mipmap, values, and XML folders in that. That's not all. We can have a lot more folders in here, but that is just the default. Drawable on the one hand relates to everything visual. So you can either put in real pictures here, so PNGs, JPEG, but also vector graphics, which will be translated to an XML format. So if you have an SVG image, for example, so vector graphic that will be yeah, coming from a browser, for example, then you can import it here in Android Studio and Android Studio will convert it into an XML format, which Android actually understands. So if your app, for example, needs a static picture, which is always the same, which it needs to load, um, then Drawable is the place where to paste it. I'll just do it here with my um, picture I copied. So just control C in your file system and paste it here. And you'll also notice that we then need to decide for Drawable or Drawable V24, whatever that means. I will get to that in a moment. Let's just select drawable and click OK. I will call it Kermit since that is what it represents. And there we go. Here's our Kermit.jpg. If we open this up, then we see our picture. And if we now want to read this picture and actually get a reference to it in code, then we can do this right here. For that, we simply need to refer to resources, which is only available in an environment where you have access to the context, such as an activity. Um, if you don't know what the context is, make sure to um, watch the previous video. But if you just have a context reference, for example, in a non-Android class, then you can say context, for example, application context, that resources to get access to it that way. Since we're in activity, that's fine. We can just say resources.get drawable, for example, which would return such a visual component like an image. And here we now need to pass an ID because every single resource, no matter if that is a picture, a vector graphic, a string, each of these has an ID, which in the end is just an integer. And that ID is used to tell this app, hey, this exact unique resource is to be loaded. How do we now refer to these IDs? We use R and you need to make sure that uh, you can see there are a lot of R imports here. Um, you need to use the R import that comes from your package name. So in my case, Compil Coding Activities, that's how my project is called because otherwise you will be referring to the resources of maybe libraries that you included. And then if we say r dot, so resources dot, you can say, and then you see all the different types of resources we really have and we can add to our app. We have drawable resources here, so we want to choose that. But as you can see, you can also have animation resources to define what kind of animations you have in your app. You have color resources, you have layouts. So that was how we previously built Android UI, but just putting yeah, the UI in XML files. We didn't define that in, in Kotlin files like we do now with JPEG Compose. But we can also store things like arrays. So maybe you, your app needs some yeah, form of uh, list of actions, for example, to choose a specific country in a spinner. Then you can also put that in resources. Um, that is not mandatory. You can also put this list in code. Um, but you have dimensions, so to store specific spacing amounts, for example, you have fonts. If you want to have a custom font in Android, then you can have these in resources. You have integer resources for specific numbers, for example, menus. On MibMap, I will come to plurals if you have um, different strings or string resources, depending on how many items you have. You have raw for just some raw files, maybe video files or so that just don't fit in any other resources package. Strings, as I mentioned, style, how your app actually looks like. Then XML is also just some further config. So if you have you have to define some extra settings, maybe, for example, for creating a widget, a home screen widget, then you need to define some config for that, which you, for example, do in XML. Um, so that is more like a, a more general resource type where you just put in all your configuration, which also doesn't fit in any other resource type folder. But in the end, we care about drawable. So our drawable dot Kermit. That is how we now refer to this. And this function is deprecated to just um, retrieve a drawable like this. We would also need to pass in a theme. We could say we pass in null and then this deprecation thing goes away. 
And usually we also don't retrieve drawables like this. So this would actually give you such a drawable instance in code where you could work with, which you could probably um, manipulate. You could maybe put a filter on top of that image. But usually when you get an image from resources, you just want to show that in an, in an image view on the screen directly. In that case, that's super easy. With Compose, we just use image. That needs a so-called painter. And here we assign a painter resource, which gen then just takes the ID, so our drawable, Kermit in this case, we can pass null for the content description and the, all the logic to read that resource and actually show it in this in this image composable, that is done by the composable itself and we don't need to worry about that in most of the times. If we want to include vector graphics in our app, then we can just drag in the SVGs in drawable for the reason I mentioned, because Android apps can read SVGs by default. So we first need to transform them into such an XML file. For example, this launcher background icon here, um, this weird grid, which every app has by default, that just defines such a vector graphic with XML tags here in the end. And if we want to add such a vector graphic on our own, we'll go to drawable, new, vector asset. And then you can either add predefined clip arts here, so simply icons which come from Android, but in Jetpack Compose, you can also add these right away in Kotlin code. You don't need to import these first. Um, but just a bunch of uh, icons, resources you can use. Or if you want a local file like an SVG or PSD file, you can include that uh, directly here by checking this radio button and then yeah, just finishing off the import. And it will then convert this into such an XML file. And before I go to the next folder, which is called MipMap, and you've been probably wondering what that is for, um, I want to talk about this V24, this little... Um, thing here in these parentheses and what that really means and why we have two of these resources here. It's actually a different resource, but we can have multiple resources of the same type. And this thing in parentheses here is what we call a qualifier. And that basically means that this specific resource is only used for a specific device configuration. In this case, this V24 means that your Android device needs to run at least on API level 24. Otherwise, this resource won't be used. In this specific case, that's just, a, that's just used because from API 24 onwards, these uh, vector graphic XMLs had some more functionality, which wasn't there previously. So we can just say, okay, that is only included for API level 24 and onwards. So if we, for example, would have a different Kermit image for all devices running on the latest Android version, then we could do that with a qualifier and we don't need to have some conditions in our app itself to check the version because the resources would all handle that for us. And for that, we could go to drawable, new drawable resource file. In this case, we actually need to um, do a little step in between or we could also create our own, the, the folder on our own. But in the end, if we click new resource, file and we now want to create an XML file which is actually only for um, these vector graphics but I will show you what we uh, try to do with this we just call this temp because we won't need that in the end but here we have these av available qualifiers that is where the magic happens so those are all the different types of configuration that we could make our resources dependent on so for example the country code if we click on this click right, then we can enter a country code and this newly added resource will only be active for devices on that country code. So for example, 49, which refers to the mobile country code of Germany, then this vector graphic or whatever we are yeah, trying to create here will only be shown on devices for Germany. And then on, on all others, we will yeah, show some default graphic. Doesn't make much sense in this case. I'm just trying to show you these different qualifiers and how we can use these. Let's move this away again. Something we use very often is, for example, the smallest screen width. So basically just the, the width of our screen, which can be used to show different views depending on how large our device is. Because usually if our app is running on a tablet, then we have much more space to show things. So we might also want to show different layouts. In Jetpack Compose, that nowadays works a bit differently and not so often with these quantifiers. But the back then in times where we build um, layouts in XML, that was really helpful. Or for example, if we scroll down, we have a night mode. So we can apply a certain resource only in night mode. Let's say you have a version of your vector graphic which only looks good on light theme. If your users now switch to dark theme, then by default, Android won't know how to make that vector graphic look good on dark theme. So it will use the exact same resource. But if you now provide a different version of that with adjusted colors, then you can have the same resource, one version for the light theme and one version for the dark theme. And Android will automatically do the switching for you. So for that, you would simply go to night mode, click this right arrow, and say, okay, this resource only applies to night mode. And you can also combine these, so you can add more qualifiers here. So if you want a smallest screen width of um, some amount of DP and you want the device to be in night mode, you can also combine this here. But let's just have 
a temp here, then you will notice that now in parentheses, it will say night because that is the configuration this would apply for. But if we now go to this Android thing, switch to project, so we see all of our folders, then in main resource, you will notice that we have a drawable night folder now. And that is how Android will arrange these different types of resources. So in the drawable folder, we have our Kermit and in drawable night, which is only applied for night mode, we could have a different graphic for Kermit. So if I just paste a different picture of Kermit in here, um, we need to call it the same. So Android Studio actually um, recognizes it as the same resource. We can then also remove the temporary file here, which was just to create this folder, since uh, I don't always know how these folders are actually called. Um, I want to delete this. Now this is another image of Kermit compared to this one. And if we now go to our main activity, and here we refer to this Kermit picture to show it on the screen. We can also add a little modifier here to size it a little bit. Modifier.filmx width. If we launch this, take a look here. This is still a previous app of mine, which you hopefully saw the video about. Then you can see it displays the image with, um, with Kermit and the yellow flowers because my device is currently in dark mode. If we switch this now to light theme, then Android will automatically switch out the resource with the corresponding picture which we want to show for light theme. So that is super cool and definitely something you need to know as an Android developer because otherwise you would need to have some kind of conditions here. If the device is in dark theme, then show this picture, else show this picture. You will need to include the same picture twice in your app, at least if you have a qualifier that um, wouldn't maybe change per device. In this case, you would always need to include both these images because each device could be in dark or light theme. But if there is, for example, a phone and you only want a certain resource for a smaller screen width that applies to phones, then you don't need to package this image for tablets into the phone app. But that is only the case if you make use of these qualifiers. But now to also cover the different types of resources we have here, let's switch back to the Android view of Thing that's a little bit clearer. Closed drawable. I also just saw that it um, now uses two Kermit folders here. Now actually one Kermit folder with uh, an, a night mode resource and a an day mode or light mode resource. Mip map that is used for the icon of our app because there are different sizes of devices and these support different kinds of resolutions for these icons. We usually also provide our icon in, in many resources so that it can look good on every device, no matter what kind of screen resolution the device has. And that is also what happens with the IC launcher here, for example. So we have lots of qualifiers here, HDPI, MDPI. So all that refers to the device resolution and just shows our launcher icon in better resolution the higher we go. So this triple X HDPI is just the best resolution for the high end devices but the lower it gets, the more likely these are to be used for devices that are not so not so strong in terms of hardware. Then if we close this, we have a values folder, which combines things like colors, strings, but also themes. So if we take a look in colors, here we can define some color constants that can also be interesting for a light and dark theme. So if uh, you have specific colors in your app where um, this kind of purple tone would look different in light theme than it would on dark theme, then you can just add another variant here. So right click on values, new values resource file in this case, call it the same colors and you go to night mode, say night, click OK. And then you can copy over these colors from here, go in here, paste these. And here you can now make adjustments to these, which only apply to night mode. So those will be your set of colors for uh, night mode. And this will be your set of colors for light mode. And in your app, you can then easily retrieve these and just compose either by well, color is equal to color resource and just passing the ID purple 200, for example, which will again automatically swap out the color depending on what uh, theme your device is in. Or if you're just an activity, you can say um, yeah, color is equal to get color and you pass our color purple 200. Then the same is true for strings. So here you put in all your strings that you might want to display in the app. So everything that stands on buttons, on texts, that is static and might be localized. So here you could have also a different name for your app. This is called activities, this project. But if you want a different name, for example, for users um, who are German, then you can also have a different qualifier for strings, which only uh, refers to German devices. In this case, you would go to values again, new resource file, and here you would need to select the locale. And then you can select a locale where this resource file would apply to. 
And then we have themes XML, which is very basic here. Um, since we have Jetpack Compose, we define our uh, theme directly in Compose. So just some general styling guidelines kind of for our app. So colors, fonts, font sizes, full title, description, body, headlines, these kinds of things. So this is not used so often anymore if you have a pure Jetpack Compose project. And we have XML. Um, won't go into detail here. We have some default backup rules, data extraction rules, and we don't need to go into that here. Again, this just contains some yeah, general configuration for specific things which don't fit in any other um, yeah, re resource folder here. But again, to summarize, whenever you have any type of resource here, no matter what kind of package that is in, you can retrieve these if you have access to the context. So either directly in an activity or using the context reference, referring to the resources, and then you can get a drawable, you can get an animation, a boolean, color, dimension, and all types of resources you actually can think of. So if this video helped you to understand this concept of resources and qualifiers, definitely subscribe to not miss any of these future Android Basic videos. And apart from that, thank you so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.